is with us today you guys and his future is so bright he's gotta wear shades what's up sage i can't believe i let you say that <laughs> <laughs> i'm the boss so i'm gonna say it anyway favorite part about wearing two two pairs of glasses is the yeah. whole um, is the whole airplane that old movie airplane where the yes where the comes in and then he takes them off and he still has other glasses yes yes surely you must be joking no i'm very serious you didn't even get the reference man from airplane, I, I, I did in fact get the. Joe, reference. I'm not. I'm so disappointed. Shirley. He's not. Please do not call me. You missed the reference. It's too I late. Not, you missed not, the mark. You are not on cue with the response. You are fired, sir. You're fired. I'm hiring Joe. I bet Joe, Joe had Yaki. a better day. I bet Joe had a better day than I did. Hey Joe, <laughs> how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, welcome to the show, Joe. This y'all, whoever's listening out there, is the one and only Joe Mackey. Hello, and he hello, went hello. On an audition this morning. Tell us about that. How'd you do? Uh well, it's you know, it, it went pretty good. Uh due to some technical difficulties though. Uh freezing up via Zoom. Ah. Good old technology. <laughs> uh midway through but right. uh yeah i feel comfortable with it like i said earlier find out in a couple days so cool that so, would um, be fantastic yes so, it would so just so i can catch up just so i can catch up um your audition today was a a, a distanced audition you just kind of your own setup at home and you send directly into casting is that how that's working now that's, i mean that's yeah that's uh that's pretty much how they all are. Well, that is how they all right now. Um, wow. unless, I mean, you know, you're you're uh, an A-lister and you get to go to the, the, you know, the private studio audition or something like that. Right. But uh, yeah. the, rest of us, the rest of us peons, uh, <laughs> we're, it's all in-house, you know, auditions. It's, you know, we provide our own lighting, our own backdrop, our camera equipment, all that is done. We've got to provide it ourselves. So what I do is in the living room, I'll just set it all up and then connect via Zoom like we are right now. And then lights, camera, action. Really? When it's done, nice. tear it all down. So that it's cool, well, though. I mean, I would yeah. think it would be more convenient than how Sage used to have to do it running all over the city. It 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 is it, it has its benefits and then it has its downsides as well the benefits would be obviously you know when you when you tape an audition you get to do as many takes as you want so you have it just right right uh, yeah the, so that's nice the downside of it is is that you obviously you're not getting the direction from the director live as you would in a real right. audition right uh, so that that side kind of sucks because if you don't do it exactly the way they want to see it, you know, you've only got one shot because it's on tape. Now they could give right. you a call back um, if they want to see you do, do it differently. Um, mm -hmm. So, it, yeah, there's positives and negatives to it, but it is the world that we're living in now in L.A. as far as auditions go. And I yeah. haven't heard really the majority are, are doing it this way. I've even had a couple casting directors. Uh, matter of fact, they just did an audition for... Uh, uh, Christy Dooley, who casts uh, The Bold and the Beautiful, the soap opera, and she was saying how, you know, even if things, you know, when things do start to get back to normal, she thinks that auditions may end up staying this way um, because it's working so well that a yeah. lot of the students might be like, well, you know, it's saving us money. We don't have to rent out spacing. Casting directors don't have to come in or they don't have to have actors come in. Right. And it's so far, 
So why change something that's working, you know? Right. Yeah. So yeah, eventually it's all going into a box about this big. If it comes in on a box about that big, it should work. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's uh, it's a different game. Things have changed, like so many other wow. things right now. So, I, re I, I remember. I remember. Let's just to tell you how old I am. I remember when headshots were going from black and white, black and white to color. Yeah. yeah. Where you, you had your prints, you went to the printer, you came out with a stack, and you put them <laughs> in your folders. So, I mean, wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Now you. Just a, a, a zip drive here's a zip drive here's my picture yeah, here's, here's I, my resume <laughs> i can't say i was around it's all, it's the, all on the site it's all on the site <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't say i was around for the black and white days but i can say i was around from the hard copy to digital days so yeah yeah, yeah. No, i was around for the yeah wow okay yeah. joe i've got to tell you a funny story um <laughs> Well, it's funny to me that um, so my mother is a Hallmark Channel junkie, right? <laughs> like, OK, like that is all she watches is the Hallmark Channel. And I love her. So if she listens, mom, I'm not hating on you. But anyway, so she did the adult equivalent of like a triple double dog dare and said, Hey, you should reach out to, I don't know, some actor that we saw on one of the Hallmark movies. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and so I did that and I was like, okay, because I'm no fear. I ask everybody to be on the podcast because anybody. I want to share the love. Right. And so yes, anybody you got... more than that, but <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> But you got back to me and you were like, oh, I'm so sorry. It took you, it took me so long to get back to you and whatever. Right. And so I looked, I briefly, okay. And my vision isn't that great either. Right. I usually wear glasses and I look down and I'm like, oh my God, the dude from the Hallmark movie got back to me. <laughs> <laughs> and so. I get home, I'm, my daughter is driving now, my oldest, and she's driving me and I'm over here like, oh my God, this is the dude from the Hallmark movie. And so we pull in the driveway and I go inside and I was like, mom, you're never gonna guess. This one of the dudes from one of your Hallmark movies got back to me and he wants to be on the podcast. And she was like, really? And I was like, yeah, I can't believe it. That's so cool. And then I looked and I was like, oh no, he just looks like he should be on one of the Hallmark movies. I was like, he's not the dude from the Hallmark movie. Well, well, well in, in your defense, I, I hear that probably multiple times every other week. <laughs> you look like you should be on a Hallmark movie. You look like you should be in every Christmas Hallmark movie. I'm like, oh, okay, great. Well, oh, no. That. Oh, honey, they do them all year the long. They're not just at Let's Christmas. Get that in production. Get it in yes. production. Yeah. 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 And <laughs> it's working. You honestly, you kind of remind me a little bit of uh, Jesse Metcalf. I've, I don't I've know. heard that. Yeah. Yes. And so with my crappy vision i looked down at your message and i saw your picture and i was like oh my god that's jesse metcalf <laughs> and then i got inside and i was like oh my gosh you're so blind that's totally not <laughs> yeah i i hear so, him and uh oh gosh i'm gonna butcher his name tyler um uh, yeah hurt well, henton Herndon. yeah he's he's the superman now on one of the shows Oh, um, uh, yes. Um, I know I can see who you know you're talking, talking about. Yeah. Talking about. Yeah. Yes. And yes, I could and, see that. And, and those are, those are good looking guys. And you know what? I think that, Hey, Joe, I think you got the better half of the, of the recognition thing. Mine used to be Danny DeVito and Joe Pesci. How tall are you though? That's the question. Easy with the questions. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Not very. Uh, <laughs> not very. And listen, I have to attest on Sage's behalf. He's much better looking than I any of the people he previously mentioned. Like he looks nothing like That's what I think. any of them. <laughs> yeah. Like That's what I think. I mean, nothing against the way they look, but just, you know. Yeah, I know. I can't see that. It's got to just be for that reason that we're not going to talk about. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but yeah. So I just thought I that was so funny. And so now anytime my mom turns a Hallmark movie on, I'm like, hey, look. Well, there's Joe. That, I, I it's like, that looks Hallmark. like Joe. Uh, but I did do Lifetime. So. Awesome. What were you in? Yeah. How were you? Uh, it's called If Looks Could Kill. I played Josh. Okay. So I think I know of that one or have heard of it. Yeah, it came but, out about a year or so ago. Okay. <clears throat> That's cool. Yeah. Lifetime and Hallmark. That's similar. Kind of but similar, I mean, I you really, really well, need Lifetime's to have a little, your yeah, Lifetime's a little more contemporary. Hallmark, I think, and nothing against nothing against mom. But, Lifetime, uh, they have murders. Right, yeah. You gotta kill people on Lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and I did die. I did die. No, so. oh, <laughs> man. That's so disappointing. Yeah, that happens. But Joe, I think you really need to talk to your agent and tell them that the people have voted and the people say that you should be on Hallmark movies. Yes, ma'am. I will make a yeah. note of that. I mean, I'm I serious. They have all year long movies. They have, and I know this obviously from my mom, but Christmas movies, they had Valentine's movies. They have Easter movies. Mm -hmm. They have, I'm sure they have everything in between. And, and um, I used to, used to work in a, in a, in an agent office and, and, and in a background agent office as well. And that was probably one of the, the steadiest things quarterly. They were working quarterly. So, you know, you right. get it. <laughs> absolutely oh yeah yeah i mean and uh, yeah i'm i'm well aware of that you know soap opera actors daytime actors hallmark that those type of actors are some of the most consistent working actors if, if you get one of those and you're a regular man that is a that is a consistent paycheck for an actor so yes yeah it's almost absolutely. blue color acting yeah right i'm sure yeah i'm i'm trying to look at the back <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to look up the one dude's name that I, the other than Jesse Metcalf. Um there's another guy and he was Noah in and not saying that you dudes watch Hallmark. He was Noah in one of the Christmas <laughs> movies. And so every time I see him in anything else, I'm like, look, there's Noah again. And that's who you look like. Is it the dude that I called Noah, but I can't. Uh, no, I think that dude looks like Joe. Him. There, yeah, yeah, we'll go with that. I like that. I like that yeah. yeah. Okay, well, I can't find it, but if I uh, if I come across it, I'll message you and be like, this yeah, is the dude, it check it like, out. Add it to but, the list. Yeah, like you could totally play his brother or something. Like he's in everything on Hallmark. Or he can stop being in everything and Joe can be in it. There you I go. I like that too. Even like better. Yeah. Man, yeah. Sage is going to put you to work. No, yeah. Yeah, man. Seriously. Wow. <laughs> so, but yeah, so what so, are hey, your... Oh, go ahead, Sage. Oh, yeah. So, Joe, I'm interested because, I mean, you know, I, I kicked around the streets down there um, in Hollywood for some time. Where, where exactly, I mean, not exactly, just give me a rough cross street as to where you're at. Like, where are you at? Wilton, right Wilton Mel and Melrose. So I'm right wow. near Paramount right Studios on Melrose. Yeah. yeah. Pre pretty much, uh, pretty much uh, Larchmont Village area. You know where yeah. that's at? Okay. I do absolutely, yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. You're right so, in the heart of it. Fantastic. I, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. You know, 
the thing I liked about it the most, and usually it was, you know, visiting friends who lived in it, because the closest I got was like Koreatown. Um, right. But living in it, you walk up the street, you got a good bar. You want to walk a little longer, you can go uh, get some frou frou thing at the Whole Foods and uh, see uh, maybe a producer or a casting director or two dragging their kid down an aisle or something. And, you know, it just, it was all there, you know? It, you were mm -hmm. you were hips deep in the Hollywood culture from the oh, yeah. bottom feet to the ones who have no problem feeding themselves whatsoever. Yep, absolutely. And, and I've, I've seen that myself. You know, granted, I, I haven't been here that long, relatively speaking. But the time that I have been here, I've, I've seen a lot of people, just like you said. And it, yeah. it is surreal when you first get here and you, you know, you see these people that you're used to seeing in movies and in interviews and major networks. And they're just, you know, just walking around like normal yeah. people, you know. Yeah. It's... One of my most thrilling Hollywood moments. Now, it, it was just over the hill on Ventura Boulevard at the Ralph's right there. But still, I was standing in line. I was buying something. And the person in front of me, I was like, I know the back. I know the I know the back of this head. I know who this is. And then the cashier addressed him, and he said something. And I was like, "Wow, Bert Young, it's freaking Polly from Rocky." Oh wow! Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. I was like, and he was just buying like a slab of bologna and and something to drink at the wow. Ralphs. It was it was wild. Just being a person. Wow. Yeah, that's probably my 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 favorite one. I couldn't even talk to him. I was starstruck. <laughs> I, I, I think, I think one of the most recent ones. Well, <laughs> and again, sign of the times is all this has stopped in the last year, obviously. Uh, yeah. But but before all the the, the shit show occurred, um, I was I so I've got a membership at Gold's Gym Hollywood, and I was in there working out a machine, and and uh, all of a sudden I feel this tap on my back. And it's this voice. It's like, he's like, "Hey, bud, mind if I uh, work in after you?" And I was like, "I was like, before I turn around, I was like, I know that voice from somewhere. Who is this?" And I turn around, and I again, I, I'm going to forget his name. The actor that played the Beast in Beauty and the Beast, and then he was in Hellboy, and then um, oh, oh, gosh, what's his name now? Um, shoot, Ben Diesel. No. no, Hellboy. Uh, Hold on. You know, oh, go figure. I tell the story, and I can't remember his name. No, uh, I do that uh, all the Ron, time. Ron, Ron, Ron Perlman. Yes, Ron Perlman. So, yes, Ron, Ron Perlman. Perlman. Yeah. Oh. yeah, that was uh, that was quite wow. quite a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would have been starstruck too. <laughs> yeah, it was it was pretty cool. So, but. You know, before that, it was, you know, like you said, it was almost like an every week thing. If I'm driving, I see somebody, you know, I think the week before that, I was driving down the street and obviously I live right by Paramount and I see um, um, uh, Martin Scorsese and, you know, oh, a couple wow. of them walking down the street. So it's Come from a meeting. They're just taking a meeting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That, you know, that was one thing that I remember a lot, um, that feeling of, wow, what a business I'm in. Yeah. I bet, I, bet that's pretty, I bet that's pretty fun for you at times. It is, at times, would be. Yeah. The key. yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it is. And that's, and that's partly, you know, why I keep going and why I keep chugging along at it. Because as, as you are well aware, I mean, this isn't, this is not an easy path no. this is not an easy career so no no you know, not at all you got to be dedicated and you got to have a drive and you got to have the passion to stick with it otherwise you're you're kind of just wasting your time so that's true that's true now i had a very good time and i would not trade my experience for anything and hey hollywood you want to come knocking I'll, I'll give you a meeting but otherwise <laughs> <laughs> But, yeah. um, no, it's, I've had a, I've had a valiant experience and, um, to speak to, uh, people like yourself who are having that experience. I also, I have a brother-in-law who, who works in the business. Um, and actually, uh, 
my sister does in a way also. But she makes she makes actors and entertainers look pretty. Uh, her her man does uh, all the performing. Um, but anyway, um, I love entertainers. I just do. It's um, so it's always really great to talk to to talk to entertainers and yeah, and, you know, and 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 hear it from you. Hear about the the drive and hear about you know the struggle and you know it, it's. To me, it's always a story of listening to someone in the good fight. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's it's uh, hopefully hopefully a good fight. And then right. you know, <laughs> again, this this last year is you know, it's it's changed the whole. Yeah, the game well, not and not not just the auditions, but you know, also uh, there's been a lot of people that have left California. Um, I've, I've had a couple of people ask me, you know, you know, since, you know, 2020 and everything that's happened, you know, a lot of people have apparently left or gave up, you know, quote unquote, the dream and stuff. Is it easier? Is it harder? Um, and again, it's kind of, you know, there's positives and negatives to it because while there's less competition, more or less, because a lot of actors have left, um, 2020 kind of made a lot of people kind of reevaluate their life situation, I suppose. But at the same time, I've noticed that a lot of the stuff that you wouldn't have higher tier competition for, you're now having higher tier quote unquote competition for because you have a lot of actors that, you know, normally wouldn't take, you know, like last week I had an audition for a ring, a ring doorbell commercial. Right. And, you know, I come to find out that, I ended up not getting it because it was, you know, a name actor who I'm not going to name, but a name actor ended up getting it, who is probably someone that never would have done a commercial before, but because right. times are tighter right now and there's not productions really happening, a lot of these higher tier actors are going for that kind of stuff, which then makes it harder for actors like myself to get. So it's, you know, it's, you know, it's, I, I remember, I remember going through Talk something about similar. Joe Rogan. Yeah. <laughs> I remember going through something similar when, when I was acting. Um, it was, but it was the case that uh, advertisers were paying top dollars for top tier actors and basically squeezing out a lot of the normal oh. you know, blue collar type workers who would they, get all these advertisements. You. Joe? Did you lose me? I've still, I've still on, got Sage. both of you. Hey guys, I lost you both. We're going to disconnect and come right back on. Oh, I hope I can remember what. Hold on. <laughs> okay, we're back. Tag team. Hey, Joe. Check it, direct it, and let's begin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I had to do that. Uh, I didn't have to, but I did. Um, so that was a brief technical difficulty interlude. And apparently yeah. it was another example of how rebel makes a really big deal out of nothing all the time <laughs> uh sage was like we could hear you and i'm like yeah. okay but i couldn't hear you i, I, I could hear I wanna... you had sage but not you you oh. oh okay well good maybe it was good that i just he was like you didn't have to disconnect and i was like but i wanted to hear our podcast <laughs> <laughs> and i couldn't hear it so but anyway we're back and what were we discussing that scrambles my brain every time this happens i'm like ah where were we i didn't write it down i don't know where i'm at I've, I've got you. Sage was saying how uh, corporations and companies were just dumping tons of money into getting higher yes. tier yeah. talent yeah. and actors. And and now it seems that uh, uh, now they're just kind of going for it at, at yeah. the rate. Right. Yeah. Well, right. They, 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 there used to be the whole thing where, you know, if you know, if you're a really high class up there actor, you don't ever do commercials. Like that's a no mm. no. Oh no, no, I'm or not gonna do commercial. Like you don't do TV. Yeah, all that right. stuff. Right, right. And and now, you know, most of us are like, oh yeah, 
you know, we're all about it. Cause you know, and I'm sure, you know, Sage, like, you know, the commercials pay really well. So yes, they do. Yes. Yeah. They, they can be very lucrative. And, um, Sage was I, the I, commercial I, king for a while. I heard uh, that. Yeah, they, uh, one of my, one of my acting classes, they called me that. Um, but like, when I tell people, uh, like people ask, you know, people ask about you when you meet people or you work with people or, you know, when you get to know people, you're making friends, they ask, oh, well, what's your deal? And, and I tell them, well, I used to do this. And they say, wow, and how did that go? And I say, well, my best year, I worked probably, counted in days, probably about 14 or 15 days of actual showing up to a job and working. And that year I made over $70,000 literally oh. in 14 days. Yeah. Um, wow. You know, residuals and, you know, however many spots and a good, and, a, and that's like a feast or famine. I'd already been doing it for about five years. So actually, if you look at the numbers, I was doing pretty good as far as being able to make a living. But that year, I lived off of that for almost three years. Yep. And that's, that's one thing that people don't understand about this business. Yep. And they're like, oh, wow, you, you went to see this and you went out to be, you were so, they saw you for that. And they saw you for that. And did you get a job? Oh, you got a job. Where can I see you? And, da, 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 da. and you're like, well, my survival job at Kinko's just paid the rent. <laughs> um, <Yep. laughs> <laughs> I'm selling I'm selling my empty beer cans to pay for this workshop I'm doing that's on top of a, a Chinese food place <laughs> over here off of La Brea. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but 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 my Sage, agent says, love you, babe, you, and hangs up. <laughs> yeah, but Sage, you're a working actor in Hollywood. That automatically means you're driving a Ferrari and you live in a big right, right. And, right. You know, you have people feeding you grapes in your mouth. What's what's going on, man? Right. Oh, is and that why you took so long to get back on the car on the call, Joe? <laughs> you were getting your grapes fed to yeah, you. Exactly. Yeah. And, and the big feather. Yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, palm this is sounding palm a little Vegasy here. Yeah. Hollywood, that's where dreams are made. Right on. Yeah. But I am ready I, for my close-up, Mr. Jamel. <laughs> <laughs> So, so um, okay, that so, one fell right on its face, yeah. guys. Thanks so, for hey, the laughs. Hey, <laughs> hey Joe. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, hey, Joe. Um, now, uh, just because it's, uh, I mean, I remember certain aspects of the, of the lifestyle so well. Now, do you still um, do, like, workshops, or do you still have, like, a regular acting coach or uh, anything of that nature. I, I, know, I mean, I know the last year with the pandemic situation has really radically altered all of that, but is there any type of um, resource that as an actor you tap into to uh, help keep you sharp on your craft? So in that regard, yes. Um, I actually, so I'm, I'm from the Midwest. I'm, well, I was, I was born in Michigan. And then I moved to Kansas, uh, lived in Kansas City for several years before I ended up moving to LA. Reason I bring that up is because uh, I had two solid acting coaches in the Midwest that I saw regularly. So even when I got here, I would still go back there to work with them and kind of fine tune things on somewhat of a regular basis. Also because I was going back there regularly just to see friends and family and whatnot. I never really uh, delved into the coaches and whatnot here in LA. I did do classes and whatnot. Um, so that's about is the extent of here in LA for coaches and whatnot. But to answer your question as far as, you know, keeping things fine-tuned and whatnot, um, what I do do is um, one of my buddy, buddies here who's also a really good actor, what we were doing and especially during the pandemic and everything is we would, um, you know, we'd get together multiple times a week, you know, we, and we would basically rehearse different scenes, whether it's a play or a movie or, you know, a script, maybe he's writing himself and we'd go over it and over it. And we'd do this multiple times a week. So, um, and then also, uh, 
lately I've been taking online acting classes because that's all there is right now. Um, there's no in-person classes. Yeah. So uh, I have been doing that um, just to kind of keep things sharp and, and whatnot. Cause I mean, right. you know, the muscle and you've got to work it just like any other muscle you would at the gym. Exactly. So, exactly. so yeah. You know. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. I mean, that, that not only that you're doing it, but that there's uh, that, you know, there's a adaptation to provide that resource because um, my understanding of, of actors and the craft is it takes people, you know, you, you can, you can stare at the wall and stare at the lines alone in your room all day long and read them. But until you can get a, a some kind of gauge, some, something to bounce off of some kind of note from somebody you really don't know what's going on, you know? So I'm Absolutely. really glad that that's, that's happening. Absolutely. And that's in, in it's funny that you said that. So you know, I mentioned I did a, I, well, a class, I should say, with the casting director for Bold and the Beautiful. And, you know, she was saying, you know, how she could see castings being all remote like this via Zoom from here going forward. And, you know, she also said that she wasn't a fan of that because of kind of the reason you just said, Sage, is that she can't get the same connection of emotion and chemistry between two actors over Zoom, like we are now, like she can with two actors that are in person. Because sure. being able to gauge that chemistry between two, two performances is really key for her when it comes to casting. So that you're absolutely right in that regard, so. Joe, I thought of another show you need to be in. Uh-oh, I need to get my list here. I know, start making a list. I'm yeah, gonna I get you work, you. sir. <laughs> I'm gonna um, hire you, my publicist or something, <laughs> geez. I'm on Man. it, I'll help you out. Um, <laughs> All American, have you watched All that? I can't say that I have. Oh, okay. Um, it's on the CW. That should say it all. And I have okay. a teenager, so that should say even more. Um, okay. But it's like teenager, they're high schoolers. There's a football rivalry. Uh, it's been on three or four seasons. But you would be perfect. Like there's this dude named Asher, named Asher in the show. Asher. Asher. Yeah. And you you could like be his cousin or something but asher's kind of messed up or 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 he could get replaced and joe could have that job sage my man all right again with <laughs> okay what? listen God. okay yeah. joe 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 joe, joe. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Joe, I ha feel now that I have to explain myself because they just turning <laughs> everything around um, that I'm saying, everything. Okay, so Asher is a teenager. You can't play his role. He's a main dude. You can't just boot Asher out, Sage. He's got to be a relative of Asher. He looks like Asher. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm, but Asher on. is a I'm looking dude. at Joe and I'm saying, I'm looking at Joe and I'm saying, one, he has the talent to play a douche if he had to, and two, a real close shave, and he's a teenager. Let's go, Joe, 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 Joe. <laughs> okay, Joe. hold on, let hold on. Wait, um, covering the beard. Let's see. Uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I totally was covering your nose and your mouth, so I can. Were you really? <laughs> yeah, uh, but yeah, I yeah, you could do that. But you should be a relative of Asher. I'm set on it. See, I think of all these things that nobody asked me for my opinion in Hollywood, but I have all these little side characters that, oh, dude, sorry, I didn't know my ringer was on. Hold on. Ow. Oh, nice. That's terrible. Ah! No, seriously, seriously, though, Joe, this, this lady would write you in. Anything. I'm having I issues. And would <laughs> love to see you just as successful as I'll get out. I could tell right now. What and shit were you talking about me when I was that. gone? <laughs> What's Matt talking? Were you doing? Are you, oh, no, no, you, you know, it's it's just something you're gonna get mad about me later when you when you listen back. That's all. <laughs> oh, great. 
<laughs> we can have you know, a replay of last that. week. Excellent. Hey, Joe, I get it in the production meeting, so I mean, don't worry about me. It'll be fine. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Yeah, the reason he wants to do Zoom production meetings is so I don't strangle him in person. Uh oh. <laughs> Not really. My car's Not going true. back to the mechanic. Otherwise, I would have to go in person. <laughs> so, so are you are you both in Nashville then? Yes. In oh, Middle Tennessee. Tennessee. Yeah, Middle, Middle Tennessee. Tennessee. Okay. Yeah. All right. Nashville cool. area. Never so, been there, but I heard it's. Here it's awesome. Well, you should come it visit. Is. It's you a should cool come place. visit for sure. Oh, I, I plan sure. on it. I've I've never even been in the East Coast yet, so I want to hit Nashville and I want to hit New York City. Those are my next stops. Nice. There you go. You know, yeah. um, as far as as far as the business, though, I mean, not necessarily Tennessee, but just south of us here, uh, over in Atlanta. No, oh. I was just about booming. to go there. Say. Oh yeah. I mean, I just to touch on that real quick. Before I moved here, that was a major decision for me. It was either, do I go to Atlanta or do I go to LA? So I need to- Go having, back or go I, home, right? Yeah, I, I ended up having connections here already. So that's why I ended up choo choosing LA on top of a couple other reasons. But but yeah, yeah. you're absolutely right. Like I, I was literally gonna go to Atlanta if I didn't come here, so. Well, well hey, you, uh, being that casting is remote and electronic and all of that, you may end up being brought down here for work anyway. So yeah, and hey, I'll they're casting right now, right now, Joe. And <laughs> coach. Okay. Hey, Joe, this is for a role of your own, not somebody's uncle or cousin or something. Okay. You should get in on Stranger Things, just so Sage doesn't think I'm ignoring you, Joe. Uh, <laughs> but Stranger Things. Oh. <laughs> yeah, they're doing it right now. Kate Taylor made casting is doing the casting for it. Love that show. At least Great for the show. kids. Yeah. So, but they would know. Have your agent call them and see who their agent is for the grown-ups and get on it. All right. Yes, ma'am. Noted. But <laughs> Hey, he's learning I, quick. That's what I I know. <laughs> Man, it's taken us how long to get you trained, Sage? You're still working on it. Yes, you're right. I am. <laughs> and if I didn't just adore him, Joe, I would probably send him to the moon. Probably. <laughs> well, everybody has their flaws, right? True story. Even me. I can't put on lashes to save my life. So hey but, Joe, I got I got one, I got one for you. I got one for you. Now, um, when I was when I was acting, um, I used to have a particularly hard time immediately after auditions. Um, and I had to have someone put it into perspective for me. Um, because, you know, you walk in, you do the thing, and let then me, you walk let, out. Let me, let, me, let me stop you right there, because let me see if I can nail this. <laughs> after your audition, you go to your car or wherever you're going, and you immediately play through everything that you would have done differently. Is that what you're going to say? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Must be an actor thing. Yeah. Okay. I, so what what do you do? I mean, because I know regardless of whatever coping mechanism there is, that's still gonna occur. So what do you do to cope with that? Uh, I'm still coping with it. Uh, okay. <laughs> that's fair. You know, you know, I one of my buddies who's been doing it longer than I am, you know, I will say is way more talented than I am. He still deals with it. I, I, I'm not sure that that's something that just ever goes away. Really, um, I think that's something that that every actor deals with. I, th I think it's you know it's the reason why you know if you ever heard the, I'm assuming it's true. Maybe it's rumor that you know Johnny Depp doesn't watch any of his movies. Yes, I I've, think heard I've heard that. Yes, and it's because yeah. you know he doesn't want to get in his own head because if he sees his own performances. You know, he's going to immediately question, oh, I should have done this differently. I should have said this differently. I should have emoted this way. So I think, I don't, I'm not sure that that's something that we ever really get over. I would say for me personally, um, the way that I dealt with it, I guess, is just uh, 
doing my best just not to think about it really i mean that's easier said than done but you know that's that's a good question if 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 for some reason you figure out the answer to that as well let me know because i'm i'm still working on that too um all all i've ever done when i when i was doing it was recite mantras things like uh well that's your job and once you're done you're done Mm -hmm. um and then uh, a call is always just a, a pleasant surprise, but your right. job is um, right. the, the other thing is um, don't, when you go, don't watch yourself, just go do it. Just don't yeah. watch yourself because if you watch yourself, yep. then you're going to critique yourself. Yep. Um, and the other thing is, <sighs> Hey, tough. That's just how it is. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're going to obsess. Hey, this is why you do this because you're an obsessive weirdo anyway. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You could always go to the gym and do like some hardcore lifting or cardio. Yeah, but then you're, then then you're then like you this. start sweating and you're not thinking about it because I can't do that. <laughs> like sweat oh. all over. No, actually, that, okay. that is actually something that I do do now that you mentioned that. So after audition, I usually work out. It's a good it, thing. It, it, it and keeps it my mind off of it. That pent up thought oh, yeah. process and energy and just lets it go. You sweat yeah. it out, I guess. That, that's actually a good idea. And something so, I do do. Yeah. Now. So. I, I don't know if I could do that. I'd probably be doing line readings as I did repetitions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have a nice day, sir. Have a nice day, sir. Have a nice day, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah that might be a good way to face force some new facial expressions out of you yeah there you go that's a that's my <laughs> oh gosh i take selfies for that to practice those facial expressions <laughs> it's okay i'm the only one that sees them usually so i feel good nice and safe <laughs> so, hey hey joe hey joe um and uh, uh how, how is this um so about um i mean I, i'm sure things are they went down and now they're kind of picking back up but um are you going out regularly i mean are you are you being seen regularly so um obviously like you said uh last year was pretty much nothing um Oddly, well, I will say I did have some auditions back home in the Midwest because I still have an agent in Kansas City. I still have an agent in Oklahoma City as well. So I was still getting some audition requests back home. Uh, but as far as here in L.A., there's pretty much nothing. However, um, just in January, I ended up signing with the new agent uh, here in L.A. And since then, I'd say probably I've probably had six to seven auditions just in the last 10 days or so. Wow. so that's great yeah so that that's that's been really great uh and that's i think that's might be a sign that things are starting to pick back up somewhat here yeah right uh, so that yeah or you're, I mean, that or you're just extremely castable and everybody wants to see you i i'll we'll go with the second option i sure. i think it's that yeah <laughs> that's yeah. definitely yeah. what's going that. on yeah, it's it's all. Hey, it's all. I hear there's an opening on the Mandalorian. <laughs> oh, never mind. You're not an Amazon check. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but you know what? I'm sure Joe has the talent to be one if he has to. <laughs> Joe, you know what I'm talking about, right? Why not? Why not? <laughs> you do you know? <laughs> do you know what I'm talking about? What that reference was, Joe? with the no the I Mandalorian say. oh okay it's okay um there's this whole like drama going on um and I forget her character name but oh are you talking about Gina yes yeah. oh yeah you, you mean Disney plus not Amazon right no he's, no no, he's, no. I said her. Amazon woman a She's, big she oh, looks like oh, a big oh, Amazon oh, okay. woman right, yeah no right. no I wasn't saying that no 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 I wasn't talking about SJW's either of the of the apps no okay. no I was just referring to the drama like oh, she man. said something and um apparently 
pay what's his name what's the mandalorian's name is it pedro, pedro pascal yeah yeah and he turned around and tattletailed on her and he did something similar a few years ago and nobody said anything to him and it's been a whole drama that's why i was like they fired her so i was like you should go try out there's an opening at, for the mandalorian but it was just me being tongue in <laughs> yeah, that, that, man, that's that was a mess. I think she's going to be just fine, though. She's got so she many is. supporters that have followed her, yeah, and have gotten pissed at Disney because of what they did, yeah, just because she's speaking her mind, you know. It's yeah, well, I mean, here's, um, here's the thing here's, here's what I really think about all of this because the culture has swung and has been in swing for some time with you know political correctness and and social justice and and all of this all of this has been very prevalent and it's and it's had a pretty good run i think we're at the point where it's going to start to swing back the other way where people are going to go well wait a minute okay sure maybe that's offensive to someone but who am, who am i who are we to say that you can't have an opinion anymore i think and i think opinions are going to come back really big in 2020 right. And I, here's some. I completely agree with you, and I and ah, oh, I hope that's the case. I hope that's the case. Yeah. Not to get political with it all, but I. No. Yeah. I, I'm on the same. I'm on the same page as you, man. Same page. And so. and my thing is, they're on a network that has been talking to young girls and teenage girls about being you and expressing yourself and owning you know empower being you owning and, your power yeah, yeah. and here she and does that and effect. she gets they fire her like yeah. bro i could I, I could go on for hours i don't want to get political uh, more than we have but you know like it's kind of ridiculous but yeah yeah that was my joke my joke was in reference to the mandalorian Okay, yeah. well, then, now, going on, but now, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, so. humor always rips the band-aid off of a, off of off of the social ills of being a human being. It really yeah. does. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. Well, but, it yeah. is. Uh, that, that's it's a crazy time in regards to all that as well. That's for sure. And I, you know, I'm. I'm a guy from the Midwest, so who's living in Los Angeles. So if you put the pieces together, it's it's been a, a shock culturally and politically for me as well. So I'm sure, I'm sure. You know, and, and you know, I, I remember experiencing that coming because I was born and raised in California. And I remember when I came to the South, how <laughs> how different it was, how different people were, how how their expression not just just as a as a person to person kind of thing which was really a breath of fresh air I mean, people looked you in the face and smiled really big and said hi and welcome and all that kind of stuff and um bless your heart the, and bless your well you didn't want to hear that because that means something else um but the yeah. <laughs> yes it does the whole com yeah. complete uh juxtaposition of the political landscape and and I mean, because they're vastly, most of the people I meet here are vastly conservative, um, which is great because one, my understanding is they don't, really don't want to keep me from doing anything I ever want to do. <laughs> right, right, yeah. right, um, exactly. It's just, it's just, but on the other hand, it's just like, but don't force that down our throat. Don't say right. that because you choose one way means that we automatically it's have It's the only to way we have to accept it and yeah and believe in it as well you know we're we're allowed to our opinion but you can't have your own opinion you know yeah. what i mean it, it's kind right. of the hypocrisy and there's hypocrisy on both sides on both sides right now yeah. but, and that's and definitely the difference in the culture here from from over there has been my experience is that over here that is more the attitude is like hey uh, whatever you want that's perfectly fine i'm not going to try and convince you Whereas back home, I remember there's a, there's a lot of convincing and, you know, 
in my opinion, the the entertainment industry has kind of been a part of part and parcel in that convincing. Absolutely. I agree. Yeah. It's a, it's a it's a hard business to be in. I have every yeah. admiration. I yeah. Do. Yeah. And and I think what you just said is part of the part of the issue with Gina and with uh, the Mandalorian and Disney. You know, it's you know she's she's kind of showing that these companies, you know, they more or less have this uh, I persona that just because she or actors work for them that they basically own her soul when what she can yep. think and feel and what she can say and everything and like that. She's like, heck to the no. Right. Get out yep. of my face. Right. Gotta yeah. love that. I do. I think that's pretty cool. Um, but Mr. Joe Mackey, I really appreciate your time and it has been a pleasure to speak Likewise. with you today. Likewise. And we would love for you to come back and I am saying this, so it will post and people can remind me and hold me accountable. I think we agree, Sage, right? That we want to catch back up with you in a few oh, months absolutely. and, and see love how it. things are going. Love it. Yeah. Either that or we'll see you on something and then know that we can't talk to you anymore because you're under contract, which we're good with that too. <laughs> as, long yeah. as, you're getting what you need, as long as you're getting where you need to be, man. But, but if you yeah, get on Hallmark, if you get on Hallmark, you need to just write that into your contract because I called that. I, okay. I called that. <laughs> All right. That, so don't that, forget about me. That or uh, <laughs> what was the other, all American was that the other all one? American? All yeah, American. all American. Okay, we'd be honored if you would put us on your writer. Yes. <laughs> okay. Do that. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Yes, but if you want to give anybody your Instagram, or I'm sorry, give everybody, including yeah, give everybody. our fabulous listeners, in cliche France. Uh, sure. I, website's actually in the process of being put up, so I don't have that right okay. now, but, cool. uh, social media, of course, uh, Instagram, I'm on there as Mactermind, M-A-C-T-O-R-M-I-N-D. Uh, and then, uh, you know, they can even look me up on Facebook. It's just Joe cool. Mackey. So, awesome. Uh, yeah. Well, we All appreciate right. you and we wish you the best of luck and next pleasure. Christmas, I expect to see you on Hallmark. Tell your agents. Yep. Um, yes, ma'am. I, <laughs> I will let them know. I will let them know. All right. Hey, well, we'll hey, talk Joe. to you later. Hey, Joe, break a leg. Break them both if you got to. I can't wait to see you <laughs> in the box. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate you guys. Uh, it was great talking to you. Great talking too. to you, Joe. Thank you.